I'm Dean Newland, and welcome to the Business of Intuition, where I coach, facilitate, train, and speak on the hard science and meaningful experience of intuitive leadership in business, so you can make better decisions, forge real connections, and creatively solve problems to amplify your impact and simplify your life. Welcome to the Business of Intuition. You've probably had the same experience. In the last couple of days, I have had two separate companies ask for my feedback. I went to a restaurant afterwards, open table, sent me an email asking for me to rate and give feedback about my experience. I got off a plane. Delta then connected with me and said, how did it go? Please rate and review your experience. These are fine things. Never do I ever provide that kind of feedback unless it's really negative because I don't ever get any sort of feedback to my feedback. I don't know whatever I provide will actually get to the person who can do anything. Nobody ever tells me that they received it and they're going to take action on it. Well, my next guest on the business of intuition has changed that and found a way in which to be able to create a platform and a QR code system by which the customer can have an immediate real-time interactive conversation with different parts of the business along their journey of their experience. And so the customer actually feels like their feedback is not only valuable, but it's changing the actual experience that they have. My guest is Adam Alfia, and he is a serial entrepreneur and the founder and managing director at Real-Time Feedback. Real-Time Feedback is an award-winning customer engagement platform that allows customers and employees in your stores, venues, what have you, to easily and instantly communicate with management. By using their smart QR codes, customers, guests, and employees can easily let management know not only about issues that concern that they are concerned about that's happening, but also about employee accolades, as well as providing recognition. Adam is a customer service aficionado and can't stand when companies deliver subpar experience. Well, I'm with you on that. He hopes that real-time feedback will help companies learn more about customer experiences as they happen and give them a chance to correct the issue. I'm also thinking about strategic planning on the side when you would often want to be able to have customers participate in that planning session and this particular platform can actually provide the means in which to do that. Back on Adam. Adam actually graduated from SMU in only two and a half years on an academic scholarship and started a European auto shop motivated by a business plan project assigned by his professor. And within five years, he expanded the auto repair facility to four locations and sold them all for $7.5 million in 2005. Adam Alfia on the business of intuition. Adam, it's great to have me on the show. I was just thinking about, not that long ago, a book that was recommended to me uh, called Working Backwards. And it's all about the process by which Amazon uses to really run its business. And it starts with the customer in mind. It's all about the customer and delighting the customer. I think anybody who's had any sort of experience with Amazon knows that that's really what they pride themselves on. And yet, I think that most companies are trying to make themselves focus on the customer, but we don't always know what the customer wants, needs. And so this whole feedback process is, is really, really important. And, and uh, you know, the voice of the customer, and do we know what they want? And are we aligning to those wants and those desires and those fears? And so maybe could you start us off by talking about how have the how has feedback from the customer experience gotten to the, you know, the company? What has it been and where is it going? What's your sense about that? And I know you're playing a big role in that as well. Yeah. So, you know, the, the concept of feedback has been around since the beginning of, you know, the first marketplaces way back when where, you know, everybody's, you know, everybody's trading and people and, and business owners want to know why are customers staying and why are customers leaving? And uh, getting customer feedback is essential for any business to stay in business. So as we've progressed and technology's progressed, 
the concept of surveys really have it. If anything, they've ballooned where we've seen organizations that have, you know, a survey that they start off with maybe five or six questions and then somebody else gets involved from this department. Hey, can you ask about this? And can you ask about that? And now you see surveys, you know, that might last 15 or 20 minutes. And it's a big trade-off for a consumer to say, I'm going to give you information based on my experience, yet they rarely get anything in return. So it's a very uh, much a one-way street. Uh, uh, and customers now want everything now. Not only do they want everything now, they want a response now. So one of the things that surveys they failed to do for a long time, and even yet today, is nobody ever responds. When you submit a survey, nobody ever calls you back and said, hey, you know, hey, Dean, I got your, your survey. Can I ask you, if, you know, how can we fix this? Or would it be uh, better if we did that? So they're just gathering information. And I think the customer is really, it's a uh, very much a one-way street when it comes to that. So I think the evolution of that is where, and, and you see this popping up where message a manager, I want to start a conversation with you. We, we're trying to change the voice of the customer to the conversation with the customer, because not only does the customer have something to say, but they want a response and they want a response now. And if you don't give them that response, a lot of customers are saying, well, I'm going to go somewhere else where it's you know more convenient or the experience is better. So tell us a little bit about how your organization does that. Yeah, so it, it's very simple. It's So uh, we're using QR codes. We've been building QR codes for about four years now. Luckily, the uh, pandemic um, kind of helped with that. Not only that, both Apple and Android now have instant recognition in, the, in their cameras for the QR mm-hmm. codes. So that's really helped a lot. But... You know, we teach organizations to uh, strategically place QR codes throughout their environment, whether it's in the bathroom, on shelves, in kiosks, on uh, on countertops, that if the customer wants to let management know something or ask a question or give them accolades or whatever the case may be, they simply scan a code. It opens up one of our proprietary uh, uh, sites that are branded to that organization, and they can put in anything. Hey, I'm in the bathroom and you're out of toilet paper. While I'm standing in line, something seriously, nice. yeah, oh yeah, and that real that real time, real time. Not only does it go to a manager, it, so we have a lot of venues on our organization. We support a lot of uh, force facilities. Mm-hmm. So not only does it go to maintenance in real time, they get it out, get that on the phone, but they using our app. The employee can now respond back to that customer, you know, either through a canned message that they can just click on a button that says, "Dean, thanks for letting us know. We're sending somebody right now. I appreciate it." So now a customer feels like, you know, I contributed, they responded, right. and let's say they walk back in the bathroom an hour later, you know, voila, there's toilet paper. So it's a very, you know, how do you get that information to the right person? You know, one of the things that drives me crazy is, you know, I visit, I dine out a lot. And when I, I go to a restroom and there's no paper towels, for example, so I'm right. walking out, why are you know, wiping my hands on my pants because there's no paper towels or... You know, and then I find an employee or a server and I say, hey, you know, you have no paper towels in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks for letting me know. But there, that information never gets to the person that can get, you know, they're not going to stop what they're doing. They'll put paper towels. So one of the things is that that information is, you know, given to an employee, but just not the right one. So our system guarantees. How does, that, is, how does that work, though? Because I can think that based on the kind of feedback that you would be giving, it has to go to the right person. I mean, I could be in the restroom and I've got I'm basically some feedback that has something to do with the culture of the restaurant, you know, the way right. people seem to behave when they are interacting with each other and the way they're interacting with the customer, right? It's right. not so specific as to, hey, you know what, my toilet paper is out, right? How does it get routed to the right person? So it depends on the organization, but typically speaking, if- the owner or the Store manager sees everything. Okay. So we set it up when we create a QR code on our back end. We ask, who do you want to get this code? And then who else in the organization do you want to see that? But keep in mind that in our system, there's a very simple way to assign the feedback. So if I get it and I'm maintenance, but it's not a maintenance related issue, I just Good. click from a drop down, I change the department. This is not a maintenance issue. This is a, uh, you know, a uh, customer service issue. And as soon as I change it, everybody in that department gets alerted. And anybody can resp- anybody that has authorization can respond back to that customer. And the customer gets it as a text message. So it's an interesting. interesting. Yeah, it's, it's really cool when you see it working and, you know, and the way it's supposed to. 
And, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's amazing to me that nobody, when I, when we first started building this and we actually built it for, I, I own a chain of restaurants here in Texas, crab restaurants. Yeah. And we saw about four years ago, five years ago that we started getting some, you know, customers reaching out to us on social media and Google leaving reviews because mm-hmm. that's how they saw, Hey, I'm going to get in touch with the business, but we didn't want that because obviously negative reviews were there for everybody to see. We'd right. rather have that private. So that we then implemented a scenario where our manager on duty would stop by every table, stop at the table. Hi, I'm the manager. How's everything? And typically we heard fine, but fine is a four letter word that we don't like because fine isn't great. Right. And people are, and we've seen, especially the younger generation that grew up behind their screens that don't have that social skill and that, you know, how to tell if somebody's happy or not happy, that they really get a lot of anxiety from that face-to-face confrontation with a stranger, yeah. just rather avoid it all together. Yeah. Uh, we saw that even though a customer might say everything's fine, they might then leave us a two or three-star review. I said, you know, the manager go, I walked up to the table, I asked them if everything's okay, and they said everything was fine. What else do you want me to do? And we right. found that customers would not give you that information face-to-face. So we actually, we own a technology company. I said, you know what? While we build something where customers can engage with management through a, through a digital aspect. If that leads into a face-to-face meeting, great. But let's start it off where that customer is comfortable saying things that they wouldn't usually tell somebody face-to-face. Can like, it be my, done but, also hand them in a service organization? I mean, you got, you're talking about like a brick and mortar restaurant. I can see that really well. Well, let's say there's a law firm. Let's say there's some sort of service association, right? That they're involved in giving B2B services right. to another company. Can this also work in that particular area? Oh, yeah. So we have medical offices that use our services. We have, so in a medical op environment, as soon as you, in some organizations, as soon as you check into your appointment, you get a text message from our system that says, Dean, this is the uh, the patient experience manager here at XYZ facility. If there's anything during your visit that we need to know about that can make your experience better, you know, click this link and they click the link. It opens up a feedback window. They can send it right away and have a two-way conversation. Hey, I've been in the waiting room. You know, I've been in the examination room for 20 minutes. Where's the doctor? That's usually, you know, that's one of the biggest right. things that they get. Not a problem. Right. The doctor will be right. We just, you know, people don't want to open the door, or look around the hallway. This allows them to engage without really leaving the room or anything like that. So, you know, and, and some organizations choose to send that text message after the visit with a one through five rating. Right. If you, give them, if you give them one, if you give them a five star, it takes them automatically to the review site of their choice, Facebook, Google, Yelp, whatever. And if yeah. they give you anything but a five star, it asks the customer, can you let us know what part of your experience was less than five star so we can address it for your next visit? And then that opens up a feedback page. That's really fascinating. I think that's a, this is really interesting. And so do you, I was, you know, we've done a lot of work in healthcare as well. We've been looking at data that has to do with employee experience versus the patient experience. And the way in which they set up these surveys, which is really pretty antiquated, is that they would send out an email and it was, if somebody wanted to respond, they could. It wasn't actually uh, calling them up. And of course, we found that more than not, people who did respond gave negative versus positive. Right. Is that also the case here? Are people more apt to give a negative feedback to a organization in this particular mode, or do you also see that it's equal to the amount of positive stuff that you hear? So here, here's how it breaks down. If you leave the QR codes around the business for mm-hmm. customers to let you know about issues or about anything, accolades or issues, more often than not, it's an issue. However, when you send them a link saying rate your experience, more often than not, it's positive because- uh-huh. They're not looking, when you have an issue, you're looking around for somebody and now our QR codes stand out because that's a way for them to engage. But if you send somebody, most customers at any business, I don't care how bad, most customers are satisfied. So now when you can take that set, those satisfied customers and turn them into a positive Google review, that's great. And if they're not satisfied, you're capturing that bad experience and, and fixing it before they leave you a negative review online. So it's a, you know it's really a double double-edged sword reducing negative reviews and increasing positive and fixing issues in real time. And that's really the essence of our platform. Everything is in real time. We measure how fast you take 
to respond to the customer because that's a big issue. You know, if you're giving me a platform and then you take, you know, 24 hours to respond, that's not very good. So we make sure we send you a backup notification after five minutes after somebody responds with a feedback, making sure that you're aware that they're waiting. And we measure, you know, how fast this employee is responding versus how fast that employee is responding. We have escalation built in that if somebody wow. mid management yeah. doesn't you know, answer, it goes up to the next person. So, and like you said, you said, uh, you know, what Amazon does, it builds it backwards from the customer's point of view. Yes. I own several hospitality. I own about 25 hospitality concepts here in Texas. So I'm building it in my point of view. So whenever we look at solutions, I said, wouldn't it be cool if a business owner had something like this rather than, you know, some, uh, you know, developers sitting in their, you know, back room trying to come up with options and features that really don't resonate with the business owner. So to that point, so if we do a lot of strategic planning in our company and part of what we are doing is to imagine what the customer's desires, uh, fears, and wants are. You know, we, we do our best, you know, based on what we've heard, but of course we don't have the customer in the room with us. Could this work in that space as well? From a planning and strategic perspective. Oh, for sure. Yeah, of course. So w- one of the things we do is we love to do a pilot programs with A and B tests, like what resonates with a customer. I'm, a, I'm for example, I'm, I'm a customer myself. You're a customer. So I was, when I look at, when I'm walking to a store now that I have, you know, the feedback platform, I'm always looking operationally. I go, these, this would work perfect here. That would work perfect there. For, for example, I don't know if you've ever been to Home Depot. I'm a huge do-yourselfer. And I go, I and I'm in Home Depot four or five times a week. And for example, I uh, build a lot of wood projects. And when you go back to the sawmill, nine out of 10 times, nobody's back there. So I now agreed. I'm walking around. They have a phone that you can push a button, but that just does, you know, puts it over the loudspeaker. You're sitting there for 15 minutes waiting and you can hear the announcement, but nobody's yeah. paying attention. So what we've done in, in certain environments, what we have patented, uh, tr- what we call trigger codes. As soon as you scan that QR code, it automatically sends a notification to everybody that has the code to cut wood, gets a notification that says somebody's waiting in the wood cutting area and I can respond, hey, I got it, I'm on my way. So now I can set expectations. Really, really cool technology that, that you know, I'm, uh, I love solving these, two, these, these small things that upset me as a consumer. So is there a certain kind of or size business where this works, where others it does not? I mean, I'm thinking about, it, you know, a person might say, I like this, but I don't have the staff to do this. I mean, what's your sweet spot? Well, I'll answer your question with, let, let me make this comment because that's one of the biggest challenges we see when we present our platform. Oh, I'm going to have to hire people and this, that, and the right. other. But what we found, and when we do post-launch analysis, that companies actually reduce the amount of time that they spend on customer issues with our platform versus without the platform, because fixing a problem, we call them Monday morning quarterbacks, where mm-hmm. you have to come in on a Monday morning and fix all the issues that you had over the weekend. And fixing problems after the customers left your business takes on average 10 times longer because now you got to get in touch with the customer. You got to call from a phone number that they're not going to answer. You got to leave them a voicemail. Customer calls you back. You don't answer because it goes to your front desk and they take a message for you. But getting in touch with that customer to fix an issue takes on average 10 times longer. If you fix it in the moment and take Man. care of it and nip it in the bud, you're actually saving time. You're saving manpower, saving time, resolving it. And you end up with a happy customer that's walking out your door happy that they were taken care of rather than a customer that could go on, you know, go home and leave you a negative review. Not to mention the four or five customers that they, and friends and family, they'd be told about their negative oh, experience. Yeah, I always heard that, you know, people just sometimes share positive experiences, but they're really much more apt, maybe 12 times more apt, you would know this better than I do, to share a negative experience within the first two weeks. So you're saying that the this, this is not a call center necessarily. This is within your the actual company that these customer feedback uh, messages would be sent. Right. It's all operational and it goes to the store manager, the system manager. They decide, hey, when somebody scans a code, I want to go to John, to Bill, and to Susie. And that's on a store operational level. We also have an enterprise version. So if I'm, for example, we recently launched Ford um, at their quick lane locations. So Ford corporate has visibility into all their stores and we give each story a score Hmm. based on how many good feedbacks they're getting, how fast they're responding, and then how many reviews they're getting on Google after they fix the issue. 
So we not only are looking to fix that issue for the customer, but once you turn a customer around and fix their issue, we then send the, the system sends them a link to rate them on Google, et cetera, based on an AI that we built. Adam, you're onto something. I think so. This is great. This is really great. So are there some reasons why people would be afraid of this? I mean, afraid of getting feedback? Uh, Customer-wise? Yeah. Like if I'm a company, I'm like, like, oh, this sounds like, I don't know if I want to know, you know, I don't want to be yeah. exposed. I kind of like putting my head in the sand, you know? Actually, it is funny you say that because one of our, one of our first slides is an ostrich with his head in the sand and it says, do you really want to know? Because <laughs> saying, yeah, I'd care about my customer's experience is one thing, but in order to use a platform like feedback, you now have to do the work, accept the feedback know that there are issues and make, you know, step forward to fix the issues that are plaguing your, your stores, you know, yeah. saying that you care about the customer. Every customer says, I care. Every company says, I care about my customer experience, but very few do anything to show that they really care. You know, somebody like Walmart, for example, they know they have issues, yeah. but you know, they're the low price leader and they're okay with that. But there right. are customer companies that, you know, they tout, I care about my customers, but show me, show me that when a customer has a complaint, that you really jump through hoops to make sure that they're happy before they leave. That's great. Wonderful. But Adam, how can people connect to you and learn more about what you're doing? Realtimefeedback.com. Very simple. Got it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm really fascinated by this. I, you really made me think uh, about customer experience in a new light, given the technology you have. And, um, uh, I think there's a lot to it. Uh, just congratulations on being able to come up with this. Yeah, and it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but a lot of triumphs. It's it's great when you see. Um, I'll, I'll tell you just anecdotally as a, a quick story. When we first launched American Airlines Center, it was our first venue in 2019. You know, a few months before the pandemic, our first feedback that ever came in was a family that went to see the Jonas Brothers, and it was a, a mother, a father, and their daughter who had Down syndrome, and they showed yeah. up to the concert about three hours before. And they thought they were buying stage front seats, but it turns out they're sitting behind the stage. Mm. So American Airlines had, you know, posted the QR code on the Jumbotron and the father scanned the code and he started off with the sentence. And we, we hear this a lot is not complaining, but you guys need to let StubHub know that the seats that they sold us were behind the stage. These aren't front stage seats as we thought, uh, you know, we're here with our daughter, it's her birthday. And uh, it's not the experience we wanted to give her. Immediately, Gina, who was the uh, head of guest experiences, responded within three minutes, said, hey, sorry about that. Where are you guys sitting? How many people in your party? She sent a VIP squad uh, wow. to, get the, to get the family. They moved them into a VIP area. They brought, bought them uh, T-shirts and all sorts of uh, you know, merchandise. They took pictures with the girl in front of the Jonas Brothers poster. And this family was like over the moon. They, you know, they were wow. back. You can see the conversation back and forth with the family. They did a Facebook post. But, you know, traditionally without feedback, you know, the guy's not going to get up and complain to security. Hey, I bought these tickets, but I don't like my seats. I mean, right, right. but if you're asking, I'll tell you that I'm unhappy. And I mean, they, they made, you know, this little girl's birthday 10 times better than they could ever thought. But if things like that, that, it allows for simple communication from people who have issues to let the people that want to know about your issues, you know, find that middle ground and take care of things. Fantastic. Great story. Great story to end on. Thanks, Dean. Take care. Thank you for listening to The Business of Intuition. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to learn more about Dean or Mission Facilitators Leadership, go to mfileadership.com. That's mfileadership.com.